I have brought you a list of expectations of coaches, which comes out of a school system in the States, and it comes out of a school system that is not operating under a learning coach model. So I want to make that perfectly clear with you. It's operating out of an instructional coaching model. And let me tell you what the responsibilities of these coaches are, what their goals are. These coaches, for whom the responsibilities that you see on page 16, the expectations, have been defined, are working in a program that serves three clear goals. Let me tell you what they are. One is to improve students' achievement in literacy. One is to improve students' performance in numeracy. One is to close the achievement gap between students of different populations. And the assumption is that coaches will do those three things while simultaneously building a culture of collaboration. The slogan for this coaching program is reading, math, close the gap in a culture of collaboration. Those coaches recite that every day. It helps them know what they don't do. They don't do science, I'm sorry. They, they just don't do science, unless there's a literacy component to the science lesson, in which case they would support teachers. Reading, literacy, numeracy, close the gap, and build that culture of collaboration. Their program is so tightly designed that 60% of coaches' time is expected to be spent in working with teams of teachers. 60%. And 40% is flexible. Individual, teams, whole school. But think about it. How do you build a culture of collaboration if you're a coach and you're working one-on-one -on -one with the teacher? You can't do it. How do you build collaboration across a school if you're only interacting with one person at a time? How do you model that professional collaboration? How do you guide that? So this program, and I wanted you to know that whole background of this set of expectations is grounded in that clear distinction, clear definition of what this coaching program is about, what goals it's striving to achieve, and how those coaches spend their time. Oh, and by the way, they have, of those 10 roles, they have four that are their primary areas of responsibility. Data, data coaching, instructional support, instructional specialist, curriculum specialist, and learning facilitator. And those coaches know that that's what they do. They don't serve on the school's leadership team, even though every principal's begged for them to be on the leadership team. They just, in the, as this program has evolved, they're too busy to do that. They don't do bus duty. They don't do playground duty. Now there's some tension around that. How, do, how can they get exempt? How do they get exempt from doing the things every other teacher in the school has to do? It's how their pro program structured. When can you engage with teachers to do feedback and conversations? If you're out doing bus duty, you don't have an opportunity to sit with a teacher after school for 10 minutes and have a conversation. So they've made some pretty hardcore decisions. Those decisions may not be appropriate for you. Here's the other thing I want you to know before I send you in to read that list. These coaches have a structured way of spending their time. They're on a rotational schedule that's a week long. From Monday to Friday of a week, they work with a particular grade level or team. So I'm just going to go with fifth grade. And during that week, they have a half a day of time to sit with the team to plan, to engage in team-based professional learning, 
to design instruction to examine student work. A half a day is built into that week. The coach then has an opportunity to visit every teacher in his or her classroom and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and then also has the opportunity to literally bring teams of teachers to other teachers' classrooms to do some visitation. In the week, the coach is able to accomplish that with this team. And also in that week, the coach has a half a day of that five day to provide other support services to other teachers in the school as needed. So the coach is never unavailable. And one more hour of meeting time with the team that's coming up the next week. So this week it's fifth grade, next week it's third grade, and in this week the coach takes one hour to meet with the third grade team to get ready to know where they are in the curriculum, to begin to get some ideas of what the focus of the week-long work will be, to help the coach prepare and help the teachers express their areas of need and interest. This structure has been in place for a number of years. Every teacher in every school gets coaching. You don't get to not opt in to coaching. It's their choice. It's your choice. You get to choose this. You can choose a different model. I'm just telling you about one. So with all of that in mind, I'd like you to look at the set of expectations of these coaches. The decision you make about who your coaches are, what you expect of them in terms of both services as well as job functions, will define to some degree what kind of expertise you're looking for as you're selecting coaches. And it will also simultaneously define the professional development needed for the coaches to become expert in this work. Too often, we hire a coach because the coach is a masterful teacher. We give the person a new title. We say thank you very much and send that person on his or her way. And hopefully today, more of those folks are doing something beyond what I did, which was to sit in the lounge and read the paper and drink coffee for the first three weeks of school until I got bored to death. But the reality is, without expectations and clarity, there isn't direction. There isn't a way to decide what you will do and won't do, and even for individual coaches or coach supervisors to know where the coach's strengths are and where the areas are for ongoing continuous development of coaches. Getting clear about the expectations is essential and it is a jurisdiction responsibility to do that. What do you expect? And you can't even do that unless you can go back to your goals, purpose, rationale and what the services are. Because these job expectations are defined by the structure of that program. 